hey, long time no see. This is Justin Seeley. Welcome back to the YouTube channel. You know, I figured since I'm just stuck at home that uh, I might as well create some new content for you guys. So good to see you. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to create really easy and flexible lens flares in Photoshop, ones that are completely customizable and can be removed, moved around or changed anytime you want. Let's check it out. All right, so here's a look at our final composition. And as you can see, I've applied my lens flare to the photo. And uh, I've only got two layers here in the layers panel, which means this is a super simple technique. Let me show you how it works. Let's go over here to the start composition. And basically what we want to do is we want to apply that lens flare right here on this light source in the background. However, if you know anything about the lens flare filter, it's not the most precise thing in the world. So we're going to have to trick it in a way. So let's go down here first of all, and create a brand new layer on top of our background layer. And we're going to just name this lens flare so we know what it is. Then I'm going to make sure my foreground color is set to black and I'll fill this layer with black using option delete or alt backspace on the keyboard. Then we're going to convert it to a smart object by right clicking on the layer and choosing convert to smart object. Now, why am I doing that? I'm doing that because I'm going to be applying this filter non-destructively, which means I can get back in and edit this filter anytime I want. I can change the strength of the light. I can change the position. I can change the type of flare. It's really cool and it allows me a lot of flexibility. Last thing we're going to do before we run the filter is change the blend mode from normal to screen and that's going to allow our original photo to shine right through without any of that black background showing on top of it. Finally, the last thing you want to do is make sure you go to the window menu and choose info so that the info panel is visible on your screen. And just note as you move around in your image, notice how this X and Y coordinate here moves around with you and then bring your mouse to the source of where you want to place your lens flare and just look at those numbers. So for mine, it's going to be about 2330 by 30 is about what I want. So that's what I'm going to do. I'll go up to the filter menu, choose render and lens flare. Now, when I first open this up, it's going to come up with whatever my last settings were. In this case, though, what I'm going to do is reduce the brightness to about 100 and switch it to the 50 millimeter to 300 millimeter zoom lens. But I still don't have a way to like place this in the right way, right? Like I could kind of guess like, oh, it's like about here. But if I were to hit OK, you can see it's kind of off. It's not exactly on top of that. So how do I fix that? Well, let me go back. Filter, render, lens flare. Inside of this dialog box, you can hover over the preview window, hold down Option on Mac, Alt on PC and click and that brings up the precise flare center dialog box. This allows you to take those X and Y coordinates you had earlier and place them here. So my X coordinate was 2330 and my Y coordinate was 30. Hit OK, it's gonna move that over. I might bump up the size or the brightness on this just a little bit, not much, but just a little bit. And then hit OK. Once I do that, it's placed perfectly on top of that light source in the background. So it looks very seamless. It adds that nice little bokeh effect right there across the image. Pretty cool, right? Now, let's say that I show this to a client or I submit this to, you know, my boss or whomever, and they come back and, and they don't like it. They think that the, the flare is too bright or maybe it's the wrong type, whatever the case may be. No problem. All you have to do is go down into the layers panel and double click where it says lens flare. That's going to bring up that dialog box again. And because you applied this as a smart object, you can change the flare type any way you want. So let's change it to movie prime, for instance, and let's bump up the brightness to like 120, something like that. You could go crazy with it if you wanted to, but let's just actually let's bump it up to about 135. There we go. And we'll hit OK. And once I do that, you can see creates a brand new type of lens flare exactly in that same location. You could also move it around if you wanted to totally repositionable. That's the other benefit of this. But you have the flexibility to change this however you want and as many times as you want, no matter what. And that's the beauty of using a smart object to do this. And also now you know how to precisely place your lens flares inside of Photoshop as well. 
All right, and there you have it. That's how you can create easy, flexible, amazing lens flares inside of Photoshop and keep them as a smart object so you can quickly change them anytime you want down the road. Pretty cool effect once you know the secret, huh? Well, anyway, thanks for joining me for this video. If you liked it, please go ahead and give it a like down below and don't forget to subscribe and turn on notifications for my channel so that you can get a notification each and every time I post a new video. Thanks very much for stopping by. I'll see you again real soon.